Hello there, my name's Gary Sims, and this is Gary Explains. Arm has just announced a whole bunch of new CPU core designs and a new GPU, and in this video, I want to take a detailed look at the new GPU. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so the new GPU is ARM's fifth generation of GPUs. This is a new generation uh, of architecture, of microarchitecture, how the GPU is built. So different from Valhall, which was the fourth generation, which we saw, as it says here in the Mali G77, G78, G710, Immortalis G715, uh, and so on. Now, just a reminder of why this is the fifth. Way back when, I think around like 2008, the Mali G400, the 400 was released without the G. That was the Utgard um, uh, um, microarchitecture. Then we had Midgard, then we had Bifrost, and then we had Valhalla. And these are all taken from Norse uh, mythology. But now Arm um, have got dropped the Norse mythology uh, theme, and they've just calling it the fifth generation of GPU uh, architecture. Uh, one, two, three, four, and now this is the fifth. And just having a look at the performance graph over the years, this is the Total Compute Solution 21. So this is what was announced in 2021. We would seen in devices mainly in 2022. That was the Mali G710. Uh, and we can basically see each year we're expecting more and more graphics performance. We've had uh, ray tracing added and so on. And now here we are with the Immortalis G720 and also its counterparts, the Mali G720 and the Mali G620. And we'll talk more about the differences between those uh, in a moment, but they're all based on this same fifth gen GPU architecture. Okay, now before we get into that, what's interesting is that uh, Arm have got some figures here to do with their ray tracing uh, performance and their variable rate shading uh, performance compared to other SOCs. So here's the Immortalis G715. Here is SOC1 and SOC2. Now, if you think about it, there's only a few people that make SOCs. You've got, uh, you know, kind of Qualcomm uh, and you've got Samsung uh, and you've got MediaTek. And so, you know, MediaTek do use the uh, R Mali GPU. The others uh, do or don't, depending on the exact generation. So you can kind of guess which are these uh, SOCs. And what they're saying, if you look at the uh, frames per second and the frames per second per watt, compared to the other SOCs, the Mali GPU is doing much better. So much better in its ray tracing performance. And they're even quoting, you know, these other ones are as low as 40% lower. And then when it comes to variable rate shading, again, you can see variable rate shading and variable rate shading FPS per watt. Okay, you can see the other ones are not doing as well. Though this one here, whichever it is, SOC1 is it's close, but not quite the same. So ARM are proud of the ray tracing and the variable rate shading they've put in their previous generations. Uh, and uh, now they're bringing out this fifth generation of GPU. Anyway, that's a marketing message from them, but I did think it was uh, an interesting slide. Okay, so what do we get from the Immortalis G720? Well, system level efficiency up by 40%, and we'll talk more about what it means by system level in a minute. Uh, less memory bandwidth usage. That's a key thing that we're going to mention again and again. Why is that important? Well, every time you have to go out to main memory, that costs power and that hits performance. So if you reduce the amount of bandwidth you're using out to main memory, then you're going to increase performance and uh, reduce the power. 15% on average more performance per watt. And then you've got the highest performance, on average 15% peak uh, performance. And then for HDR rendering, it's two times architectural throughput for 64 bits per pixel uh, texturing. Okay, so here we we're talking about uh, the bandwidth reduction and the main technology that has been introduced in this new fifth generation GPU is Deferred Vertex Shading, DVS. We'll talk more about that in a moment, but what they've done is they've got some real world tests here. So we've got uh, Genshin Impact, we've got Fortnite, we've got some benchmarks, we've got the Elvin Ruins, uh, and basically what they're saying here is look at this, 41% less bandwidth, 37% less bandwidth, 33% less bandwidth, 26% less bandwidth, and so on. And what they're saying is here is if you take the amount of power that's being used by the Immortalis G715, you can see here at around about the high 60s, low 70% 
right up to 100%. That's how much uh, DRAM, uh, DRAM power is being used, plus the power used by the GPU. Now, if you go forward to the Immortalis G720, you can see that the GPU itself uses less power, and this box here is significantly smaller using less of the RAM. Why? Because it doesn't have to go out to RAM so much because they've improved the bandwidth by keeping more in the GPU using this new technology of deferred vertex shading. So of course, any saving in how much here in power saving, uh, both internally and uh, accessing main memory, of course, is results in longer battery life, less heat, and all that kind of stuff. So what is deferred vertex shading? Well, a GPU has a pipeline, a rendering pipeline. Things go in at one end, they chundle along, that things are processed, and at the other end, you get this rendered frame that you can then display on the screen. Now, during that pipeline, lots of different things happen, and, and in a traditional sense, in an immediate uh, uh, forward render, basically they happen in order. So it's in order. So you put in, I want to draw this triangle, the triangle gets drawn on the screen in the right color, I want to draw this other triangle, and you just kind of repeat this for every single triangle. Now there are a load of techniques to speed up that pipeline, including um, deferred rendering, which means that you defer things until later. Now inside of this pipeline there are two main types of shaders. There's the vertex shader and the fragment shader. So one of them is basically working on the geometry, the polygons. So you might be able to take, for example, a flat plane and then add kind of, you know, a wave effect to it to give you rippling water. And that would be done in the vertex shader. You move the points around that make up that plane so it looks like it's got ripples on it. And then you get to the fragment shader, which adds all the colors and, you know, the to you and the shadows and things like that. So you know what color anything should be. Things that are invisible have been dropped out of the way. So you don't, you know, don't do things twice. There's a whole pipeline. Now, you can speed up that pipeline, as I said, by deferring things at different times. And one of the things they worked out quite early on, a few years ago now, 20 odd years ago, is that you can defer different parts of the fragment shading until towards the end. Now, Arm have come up with this technology where they defer some of the vertex shading. Now, they still have the normal forward vertex shading flow. So, a, a, a the geometry, the polygons, the vertexes, they come into here and they kind of go along this traditional path. Now the problem is here, in this long gap here, what this means is that because the, the draw calls come in at different times, you have to write back this stuff to main memory and then bring it back again later when you need it, when you're going to do that shading in the fragment shading, you're going to need all that data. But sometimes you have enough information that you can actually say, well, here's all that information I need. Let's just keep it and I'll just use it only when we come to the actual fragment shading. So the vertex shading and the fragment shading happen uh, next to each other, basically, one after the other. So here it says position varying and vertex shading. Here you can see the varying shading is happening much, much earlier on. And then this information needs to be stored and then used later uh, at the end of the pipeline. So this is a technique in which they've been able to keep some of the stuff local and only use it when you need it. And therefore it doesn't have to write out to main memory. And therefore you've got that power saving. Okay, so here's a summary of how they've reduced the bandwidth. First, we'll bring vertex and fragment shading together to keep intermediate data local. So I said they just, they, if they happen one after the other, you can keep it local inside of the GPU. The tiler, uh, each display is split up into little squares. 16 by 16 is actually bigger uh, in this new generation of GPU. Uh, it divides up into these tiles and the tiler chooses which triangles to defer and which to shade up front to prevent excessive reshading. Uh, so that way you can save uh, bandwidth and power. And because they're using larger tiles, that means that each triangle spans fewer tiles. So less reshading and more tight triangles can be deferred. So the more that can be deferred and then used without having to write out to memory, it reduces the bandwidth, reduces the power, increases the performance. And there you go, the fifth generation, the major feature in this fifth generation GPU. 
Okay, now another thing they've got in this fifth generation GPU is dedicated hardware for two times multi-sample anti-aliasing. Here's just an example. If you look at this triangle here, this pixel here in the tile, okay, you've got a green triangle and a blue triangle. Well, that's just going to give you a green because you just you put it straight across. If you sample it twice, well, actually, you'll see there's a green and a blue. So you add the green and the blue and you get the combined uh, color. Now, there's four times MSAA. There's eight times MSAA and so on. Now, of course, you get greater fidelity with the higher level of multi-sample anti-aliasing. However, of course, that costs performance and that costs energy. Now, in previous generations, if the game engine asked for two times MSAA, you actually got four times MSAA for free because they used the same engine. But ARM realized that actually when they looked at real world cases, when they looked at the actual games, they saw a lot of them were still only asking for two times MSAA uh, because they wanted to have the performance and uh, not be so power hungry, but also add that extra fidelity that anti-aliasing gives you. And so now there's a dedicated hardware engine for two times MSAA. So that if the game asks for it, it will actually get it and it won't get the four times MSA, uh, which, it was, which it would have got before, which wouldn't have been so efficient. OK, so here is a summary of what we're getting in terms of GPUs across the board. As I said, you've got the Immortalis G720. There's also the Mali G720 and the Mali G620. Now, they're all the same GPU in terms of the micro architecture design. However, there are some important differences. The Immortalis has to have 10 cores or more and has to include ray tracing. The Mali G720 is anything between six and nine cores and probably doesn't include ray tracing. It would be possible to add it, but it wouldn't be worth it if you've got so few cores because you've already reduced the performance. And then for real uh, kind of price sensitive uh, SOCs, you've got the Mali G620, which has got five cores or fewer, but they all use that same architecture, that same fifth generation uh, architecture with the, de uh, the deferred vertex shading and all that kind of stuff. So it just depends on what the uh, chip maker, ARM's partner, wants to include inside of the actual uh, SOC. So the, the beast, the big one, is the Immortalis 720, G720, with 10 cores or more and ray tracing. And then you've got a littler one and then a smaller one. Overall, we've got up to 40% reduction in memory bandwidth, an average 15% more sustained performance, an average 15% more peak performance. Okay, so that's it, the new GPU from ARM. So we're going to see these in smartphones, maybe announced at the end of this year, certainly going into next year. So it'll be interesting to see what their real world performance is when we get them in actual devices. Will you be looking to buy a smartphone with this GPU in it? Please do let me know in the comments below. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.